This red-breasted nuthatch named Lentil has really shown people just how wonderful and fun these birds are. But even still, many aren't fully aware of the awesomeness contained in these little characters. They don't really get the limelight that other small birds like chickadees or hummingbirds get. In this video, my goal is to help show birdwatchers just how remarkable these birds are, therefore growing an awareness and appreciation for this charming species. In the boreal forest, a tiny yank-yank noise can be heard. It's a male red-breasted nuthatch claiming his territory. All year long, they are chatty birds, but their most vocal time is during the breeding season. This is especially true when a pair is together, adding to just how exciting these nuthatches are. There are always at least little meeps or beeps coming out of their tiny bills as they do their thing. Seemingly as a way of greeting his female, the male makes a highly excited trill when she comes into his space. The few days leading up to egg laying, females quiver their wings while making raspy sounds or very rapid notes. The male may even give her a food offering while she is doing this. Their highly vocal nature really adds to the enjoyment of watching these pleasant birds. It's even more entertaining watching them with other small birds like chickadees because these nuthatches don't mind letting them know who is in charge. They will sometimes use a very raspy sounding call as they quickly raise their wings up to intimidate them. They may even break out into a full-out swaying display. What a cutie. One lovable thing about these guys is that mated birds are monogamous, meaning they only mate with one partner at a time throughout a breeding season. They don't typically cheat, and sometimes they can live together on the territory for a few years before changing to a new mate. Once spring arrives, they get busy digging out a hole in a tree with their strong chiseled bills. This is where they raise their brood. In my 10 years of observing this wonderful species, they have always used a dead or dying conifer tree that has no top, like this. The nest hole is normally anywhere from 5 to 40 feet above the ground. It's not common for them to use old abandoned woodpecker holes or even nest boxes, unfortunately. To protect the inner cavity from parasites or predators, they do something very fascinating and clever. Smearing around the outside and inside entrance hole with a sticky substance found in these bubbles on this pine tree. Just a little poke releases the gluey resin. The nuthatches use their bills to collect it, but some will also use a piece of bark to gather it on, an example of tool use in animals. It is thought that the sticky substance can keep ants out as well as other insects. It may also keep squirrels from chewing through, but a determined enough one may not be deterred. It's a brilliant thing they discovered, but how did nuthatches get in without getting the sticky resin on their feathers? Well, shoot straight in the hole without touching the edge. Cute. Food caching is another interesting ability of theirs, something that is shared with other birds like chickadees and jays. Not all birds do this though, so it's an entertaining thing to observe as they stuff food into the cracks and crevices in trees. Doing this is their way of preparing for times when there isn't much around to eat. Oftentimes when storing food away, nuthatches will tear off pieces of bark or lichen to cover over the spot, further concealing it from any other bird or animal that may come by clever trick. Only problem though is being able to remember the places food was put, otherwise why even invest in the time in doing this? It's thought that in order to relocate the hidden food, they use what's known as spatial memory. The arrangement of trees and other things in the general location of the cached items helps them pinpoint where most of them are. To think that inside that cute little noggin is the capacity to do so much. 
Probably the most fun thing about them is watching how they effortlessly climb in whatever direction they want. They can even walk upside down on a limb and are perfectly adapted for going headfirst down a tall standing tree. This is fun to watch and to show them in action I set up my camera down close to the bottom of a tree pointing upward. Although their legs look like little sticks to us when it comes to climbing, they are quite strong, allowing them to easily move around. There is more at work here though than just strong legs. A close-up shot reveals their very long toes, four of them, three forward-facing ones that help them to climb up a tree, and one big toe at the back that points backwards. As you can see, they also have some impressive talons for a small bird especially the back one that curves downward. It is very strong, allowing the nuthatch to cling onto the bark of a tree while facing down toward the ground. It seems that the short stubby tail that nuthatches have is another feature that helps them to be able to go head first down a tree. Other tree climbing birds like woodpeckers or creepers have a long tail that they use to rest on, preventing them from going downward the way that nuthatches can. No wonder they can climb around a tree whatever way they feel. But what advantage does this give them? Well, discovering hidden insects and spots that are missed by other birds that can't travel headfirst down a tree. A woodpecker going up a tree would likely be only able to look up into the crevices of the bark for food. A nuthatch going down a tree headfirst, however, would be able to see in the crevices on the other side and that could even include a recently cached seed by their own mate. Rascal. As if all of what I shared in this video wasn't enough, there is something else quite unexpected that they can do. And although I have been very familiar with these birds for a decade, I never discovered this ability of theirs until four years ago, from a male named Pinto. But seemingly not all individuals can do it catching pieces of peanuts or seeds in their bill. Then I learned that another nuthatch I had known for a couple of years, a female named Maggie, could do it too. She was pretty good. Other ones I've known haven't shown this ability though, but I think Lentil is showing some promise lately. Speaking of lentil, if you want more fun red-breasted nuthatch shenanigans like how ridiculously chatty females can be during the breeding period, or the fact that some, like little lentil here, will hide seeds on a person, me, check out this video on the screen now. Thank you for watching. Happy birding. Lentil's hiding seeds on me.